welcome to another video. This is going to be the second uh, video on my wild hair series. This is a series where I explore more creative looks, something that I know is maybe not for everyone, but it's something more artistic, more of a statement piece, and hopefully you guys enjoy watching me do it, and maybe you can learn something for yourself so that you can try it. All right, let's get to the video. I'm going to paint this dresser and the way I'm going to do it, it is so cold. It's kind of cold out here so I'm a little worried about my paint drying too quickly but we'll see. We're going to paint it in here. I'm going to try this thing where I actually work out in the garage so I don't bring the work inside the house. So I can try and separate work from like when I clock out which never seems to happen on time but um, I'm going to try it. So we're going to paint this guy. First thing I'm going to do will be to clean it. And I'm debating whether or not I want to clean it first and sand it later. I think I'm just going to sand first, just the light sanding, and then I'll clean it and then we'll paint. It'll be cool. Now I'm just going to use 220 hand sand it. I just want to scuff it up a little bit so that the paint adheres better because it does have some sheen to it. So we're going to try that and then I'm going to clean it. Actually, I might switch to 180 instead of 220. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean it with TSP cleaner. And that is just so that if there's any like grease and grime or whatever there is in here, I can just um, clean it real well. And it is TSP, so definitely wear gloves. Well, actually, I'm mainly, I'm mainly wearing gloves because it's cold outside and I don't want my hands to actually get wet. So <laughs> that's that. That's the truth. After cleaning with TSP or down dish soap, whatever you choose to use, you always want to go ahead and go and clean it with clean water, just water on the rag to get rid of any soap residue. And then I'm going to show you my uh, inspiration photo and the first layer that I put down. This is working out my color palette to see how the colors look like once they dry and it also gives me a chance to practice. Um, I don't know how to explain that, like I am not an expert painter but I do like to try and experiment and I am a very visual person so on the first coat since it's gonna get mostly covered anyway I like to take that opportunity to play with the colors just try and try different colors see how they work together and then on the second coat I can take what I learned from the first one and move forward I hope that makes sense to me it's a good practice to mix in your colors on the first layer or you can choose to go with a solid color it really is up to you but if you've never done something like this, I definitely encourage you to just try it on the first coat. I always say this, we all always say this, it's just paint, you can always cover it up. But it kind of takes the fear out of it to just play with the colors and let yourself go and see how they look together. I love about using the colors on the first layer rather than a solid color it's because in this case the colors that I thought would match my inspiration photo ended up being a little too cool tone and so when I lay them on the piece I was able to pinpoint that and change for my second layer so it's really good to just like get your hands on it get painting and then you'll you'll learn as you go <laughs> Here's where we are with this piece. I really don't know how to show you guys this process because the truth is it's very organic and I just go with the flow. Like it, you just paint and mix the colors. I have shown you a very in-depth uh, tutorial on mixing and all of that. It's called my watercolor effect 
dresser and it's like a peachy pink and I did that super blended look on that one so there is really not much more to that other than I guess picking your color palette it really is just a matter of what you like and your taste and if you follow me on Instagram you would see that I posted not too long ago how like a screenshot of what my saved images look like and that is kind of like what I base my inspiration like I'm scrolling through Instagram and if I see an image that the colors kind strike me or the feel or something strikes me of that photo I will save it into my inspiration folder and then I'll go back in there and look at like what inspired me about that and it generally is just the colors and that's kind of how I pick my color palette you can look at nature flowers a sunset whatever colors don't have to necessarily just be all warm or all cool tone however when you are mixing them when they are wet you do have to be mindful of that because if they're wet and you mix makes two opposite colors in the color wheel that they will turn into gray they will kind of mute each other out but you can layer them once they're dry so that's pretty much what I'm doing if you notice here I have this is kind of a cool toned red but I also have a warmer tone over here and this actually this pink that is in the middle kind of one of the main colors it is a warmer color it's got like really cool um like brown tones i wish i could show it to you let me see actually i can show you so this is a tea rose color from dixie bell it is a soft muted pink when i mix it with the orange it takes more of a warmer tone more peachy more orangey obviously by itself it's a little warm soft neutral and dusty rose kind of color and when i mix it with the blue it takes a little bit more of a purpley hint so it's a very versatile color that worked perfectly for me for the next layers, I adjusted my colors as I saw fit. I will leave a list of the colors that I use. I have to warn you that there's quite a bit because this is a blended look, uh, but I adjusted to make it a little bit warmer and whenever I'm mixing in place, so mixing on the piece instead of mixing the paint on my palette, I just uh, spray it, mist it with my misting bottle, which you know you cannot do a blended look without one. So uh, I just mist it with water to activate the paint and then I blend in place. Okay, so I think I am almost done with this project. When I am done with a project, I like to just let it be and then come back and look at it the next day, like with a fresh pair of eyes and so to see what I need to touch up, what I don't like. And in this case, I think I'm gonna remove this blue because it's making it too busy, just this little scratch right here, and then I'm I'm probably gonna get rid of this one over here as well just so it's not super busy I think that there is a lot of dark blue going on here so I might bring in some more of this mint over here and I am really itching to add some copper to it so I don't know I'm gonna think about it help me decide so here is essentially my color palette here is the copper it's so pretty but also here is with gold I don't know which one is winning gold or copper I think you can unfair that gold won but barely I actually had a tough time and you guys had a tough time deciding as well so gold finally won I'm going to use a chip cheap brush so a chip brush that is cheap <laughs> but anyway these brushes i don't use very often actually i do but not necessarily for painting as much as i use them for dry brushing which is essentially what i'm doing with the gold just dipping the gold paint very lightly removing the excess and then kind of lightly dusting it on my piece just like ever so gently removing almost all of it before i 
tap it on the parts that I want to accent just for a little bling I don't want to overwhelm it. this piece is already a little bit out there so I wanted to complement it nicely instead of just make it super busy and I still know that some of you guys may not think that it is subtle but uh, yeah it is I guess a matter I guess a matter of opinion and again if you guys are willing to try something I'm going to say this it is your art it is not to please every Everyone else so just do something challenge yourself try it see how you like it and you will learn uh, new techniques what you like what you don't like what products you enjoy and all of that so that is it now we just seal it with top coat which I'm not gonna show you because I've showed you how I do that millions of times and so let me just jump into the fun part which is the finished product <music> someone else's dreams. Why do you do that, man?